Song Seng Woon. He's regional economist at CIMB Research. Song, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Well, what are you looking out for today? Well, nothing very much, I suppose. In, in simple terms, you'll probably just be uh, Singapore's continuing push to upgrade the economy to be more productive. So in the essence, it'll probably be sweetening, I call it the sweetening, the productivity carrots in terms of schemes so far are there, but take up among the small and medium uh, sized enterprises have been relatively low. So they were probably needing to tweak those to encourage more to take up and perhaps a new one just to ensure that the momentum can be kept going. Yeah, what would you be looking for more specifically here, Song? Well, I suppose in terms of the uh, revenue side, well, it's always uh, going to be a, a function of the economy. It probably be slower uh, and, you know, not quite the same pace that we saw last year when the government did see extra income coming from a buoyant property sector and, I suppose, stronger goods and uh, GST tax collection as well. Spending side, perhaps more uh, on issues which are uh, of concerns at the moment, infrastructure is one, uh, roads, rail, and perhaps also things like simple things like drainage. In terms of uh, incentive, fine-tuning, as I say, in terms of the, 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 the focus of the government is really about how to get that growth perhaps and sustain in a medium longer term at that 5% coming from 3% productivity growth and around probably stable 2% labor growth itself. Last year wasn't a great year for productivity. Most of it came from labor growth. Productivity on average was just about 1%. So I think it's still some way to go to kick uh, productivity uh, gear going. But in essence, I suppose it's more uh, for the accountants as far as this budget is concerned uh, of how they're going to tell company and the clients to take advantage of the new measures or the fine-tuning of the existing one that they can tap on to help them so-called uh, improve uh, productivity e either through lowering costs or through depending less on foreign worker. Uh, so let's just uh, look at the state mm. of the Singapore economy at the moment. What sort of shape is it in and you know what will the government be looking mm. at in uh, terms of weakness perhaps and perhaps where it needs to put mm. plasters on? Well I suppose the good thing is uh, Last year wasn't too bad. It fell in within the uh, year ago forecast of that four to six percent range, coming in at five percent. This year they're maintaining one to three. Uh, this region growth, fortunately, I think is still fairly decent. Yes, it's slower, but you know we did see fairly firm domestic consumption as a growth driver in Indonesia. That's still the case in Malaysia as well. We've seen uh, Thailand getting back on its feet. And you know uh, the, the the interest in Myanmar is very strong, given that the economy is opening up. So Singapore is very relevant in this region as a kind of a launching pad to be it, uh, Myanmar or be it into Indonesia and Malaysia itself. So it's attracting a lot of investors coming through either the shop up shop or to move beyond uh, Singapore uh, itself. So it's looking to maximize as much opportunity it can for more of these interests uh, as well. So as a whole, I think there's still room for the economy to grow. So I, I'm still looking probably 3% growth uh, quite easily for Singapore, combination of just growth in the services sector as well as modest growth coming out from the export of goods, assuming we don't see you know, uh, a deep recession unfolding in, in Europe in particular. Okay, well, you know, of course, you've got land restrictions mm. there. We've got, of course, um, housing mm. costs invariably are going to be um, hit by Indeed. this. You know, how concerned is the government about that? And could we see them actually giving some handouts out to poorer people? I think that's still always, that's really the key focus as far as government every year in terms of, because more wealth and jobs are being created every year, uh, and we do see, you know, attention obviously at the lower end, you know, it's, it's no fun for Singapore to be among the top 10 most expensive cities to live and work in, given that this is a small city state of just 700 square kilometers uh, itself. So yes, they'll be focused on the lower end in terms of helping them cope with the higher cost of living. So they're very direct in that sense in terms of just rebate to ensure that you know, their household can manage uh, in, in terms of the more tougher environment with regard to you know, the rising costs that we're seeing itself. But it is a very pragmatic government at the end of the day. It creates opportunity, you take advantage of it, we help you in terms of cost, and at the end of the day, you help yourself, we help you. Song, thank you so much uh, for your time. Song Seng Wun, there from uh, Singapore, right?